So guys, welcome to another episode of Churchill Customs. We are having a special episode today because we have a guest. How about an introduction? Hey, I'm Stefan. I'm coming here from Australia. Thought I'd ride with these guys. It's gonna be fun. So Stefan will be riding on the the Night Rider scooter. Um, yeah. For those of you who've been wondering where the purple bike has been for the last couple of episodes, I'm not gonna lie, it's just been more convenient to ride the scooter. And scooters are fun, it doesn't matter what you say. I remember you, you left my spirit, with you eyes all I'm feeling. Remember how we the line. So, Stefan, this is your first time out of Australia, right? Out of Australia, and I decided to go to China. Like, wow, that's like expert level tourism straight up. For sure. Look at this! Hi look at this hill you had to climb to get here. <laughs> yeah, do you know he can't engine brake because he doesn't have that that luxury. So I think, yeah, we should try and go a bit faster, otherwise he'll slam into us. I think I've had too many Bowser. <laughs> yeah, way too many Bowser. Yeah, watch out for that. Like it looks so. I really want to just ride straight off the edge. Why edge. you have this fantasy, Winston? I don't like, know. Look at how beautiful the subscribers, it is. You need to know. Winston, every time we go on a corner where there's like a treacherous drop off, he's like, oh, I want to ride off off the cliff. It looks just so inviting. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Stefan, what are your impressions of China so far? Well, um, it was it was it was difficult at first. So I um, as soon as I got off the plane, I got to the airport and it's just it's a completely different world. Um, uh, just so many taxi drivers, like so many guys coming up and going, you know, Tunali, Tunali. I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't, I, no thanks, no thanks. Um, but uh, even even when I did ask for help, it's I, I don't know. They just pointed me in the wrong direction. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, yeah. let me go this way then. I, That's I, very tight. I yeah. worked it out on my own. But um, it's it's the first thing that hit me was the smells. There's all these different smells. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's it's. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if it's a good thing, but it was it was a good experience because every time I thought about going overseas, it was I wonder what it smells like and like what are, what do people's houses smell like? And hey, I, I got my uh, I got my experience. I think you got your fair fair dose of smell here in China. Yeah. So you you're all about the smells, eh? So uh, <laughs> where are we? We are in Elephant Head Mountain, Xiang Toshan. Yeah, and I'd like to show all our viewers back home, and of course Stefan, because he's new to China, I'd like to show you a little favorite little statue of mine over here. So let's take a little walk. It's just over here. On the way, I'll just explain to everyone, these are the statues of uh, filial piety from Confucianism. Yeah, so, so this are, is... Yeah, this is the stuff you need to do for your, for your family. Yeah, so... Okay, let's start with... Titwife. Oh, Titwife, yeah. Okay. So apparently her grandmother... Is a, a mother-in-law, right? Yep, that's a mother-in-law. Could, couldn't chew food because she's too old, so the daughter-in-law breastfed her instead of feeding her own child. Yes, so you can see here this disgusting old woman sucking on her breast. She's really enjoying it. Yeah, she certainly is. She's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, she's moldy too. Anyway, there's, let's get. There's one. There's one better. Yeah, here it is. This is my favorite one. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> this poor guy. He tasted dung with an anxious heart. So his father was sick and the doctor, he went to the doctor and he's like, how can I tell if my father is going to recover or not? And he's like, you have to taste your father's shit, like his feces. And if it's uh, sweet tasting, it means he's going to die. But if it's not sweet tasting, it means he's going to live. So he tasted dung with an anxious heart and guess what it was sweet and his father died anyway this that's the weird thing about it though is like if he didn't taste it his father would have died but he, not only did he eat shit but his dad died as well so he ate shit and his dad died pretty shit what's yeah. the lesson to be learned from this also the um i decided to take the train just because i'm like hey let's let's go on an adventure and uh, one thing I really like about the subway or the metro is how advanced it is. Like yeah. Coming coming from 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 Sydney, from from Australia, I um, the the trains aren't that advanced. It's all it's all very manual. The, the guards still talk over the microphone to tell you what station it is. Oh, okay. Um, and it it filled up pretty quick. Um, and the one thing that surprised me is that even though it's a, it's a large city they still responded to me as a foreigner like 
you'd have kids saying, hey, look, mum's a foreigner. And, like, and I'd just look and smile and wave, and they'd be waving back all excited. Um, there yeah. was one kid who, who really wanted to sit next to me. And the right. parents were like, no, come back, come back. Okay. <laughs> so um, it was good. It was, it was a good novelty to be so, I don't know, uh, to, to grab their curiosity like that. Yeah, you get that rock star fame. Winston yeah. and I have been here way too long. We, we tend to lose touch with all that kind of really fun, weird stuff in the beginning. So it's really cool to hear that perspective, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's the, true. Um, one thing that was really helpful is the, the dual language signs. Um, if it wasn't for the dual language signs, I don't know if I would have been able to make it. Um, like, I know a bit of Mandarin, but I can't read it. Yeah. And so I'm like, uh, what? That's, that's where you'd get bitten if you're anywhere outside of Shenzhen or Beijing or Shanghai or Guangzhou. Yeah, that's also a new addition, by the way. When I first came to Shenzhen, there were no bilingual signs. Ah. Yeah. That's like within the last, I'd say, five or six years. Winston, I don't know about you, but a lot of my characters actually came from me for, like, forcing myself to have to read signs in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah, I remember the first character I learned, well, I, I knew a couple from Japanese, but the first one I actually learned yeah. was the character for Ying, you know, Ying Wen. <laughs> for, nice. for English, because it looks like a little space invader. Oh, yeah! And, and it does so, look like a space invader. Like, when I was buying pirated DVDs, I'd look on there to make sure it had, like, Ying Wen, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, space so the, invader version. Yeah, I looked for the little space invader, then I knew it could. It was going to be in English. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Cool. Anything else that's uh, come up and struck you as being really odd, Stefan? Um, odd, odd. Um, oh God, I don't want to sound like that foreigner. It's like, oh gee, they don't have this. No, but, you um, should. Please do. Um, one thing that did surprise me is is not a lot of people spoke English. And I know that's like, whoa, hang on, don't be so arrogant. But I don't know, I just expected uh, more people would know basic in English. But just flat out, like, I'm like, you know, ni shuo ying wen ma? And they're like, uh, bu shuo, bu shuo. I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm like, right. do you know English? And they're like, no, no, I don't speak, don't speak. Yeah. And so, yeah, but I, I fumbled around. Um, finding food was difficult because a lot of the places didn't have pictures on the menus. Sure. Yeah, and no English, of course. Yeah, which, which is fine. But yeah. um, I found a place with pictures and cool. it, was, it was good fun. Ex exactly. It's like I was walking around, I'm like, okay, i got to pick a place. And I even, I, I, I looked up the word for roast duck and, I, and all these other things. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. And the, the, the place I walked into had pictures. So I'm like, it's good. It's good. Nice. Winston, you, you know the franchise that we call Pac-Man? Yeah, yeah, I know. That was the first place I ate in uh, in China, and like him, just like Stefan, like I couldn't read anything, there was no pictures. Yeah. So of course I'm like, ah, it's an adventure, and the first thing I chose was pig brain soup. <laughs> it was really unfortunate. That sucks a lot. Well, yeah. um, one thing that I have noticed that's very different from, from Australia is uh, a lot of the locals just don't care. Like the the rules are advisory. Like yeah. the, the the crosswalks are like you know you could stop, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and that's a good contrast because what they're doing isn't unsafe. Sure. Yeah. They 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 don't really care about the rules and the regulations as much. In Australia, it's very much oh you broke the law, you're a bad person. You sure? And and so they're a lot more uh, aware of their surroundings. Cool. Pragmatic, yeah. Yeah, very pragmatic, very practical, very... I'm not doing any harm, I'm going to do this. Yeah, right. well, watch out for this crap on the road. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, they'll just do do whatever they want to do, really. <laughs> and, I, and I like that. That, that. that appeals to me, because... Yeah. I don't know, I find uh, sometimes living in a... Uh, in a really advanced first world country a little bit stifling. You know, yeah. they, it's like they treat you like a child sometimes. Yeah, nanny state. Yeah, and, and in China, I'm like, it's, it's full of adults. People who are expected to work it out for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a huge appeal. We did a video about personal freedoms in China versus the West, and I think that covers pretty much what you're talking about. Exactly. Uh. You know, you can pretty much walk around drinking a beer in the middle of the highway here and you know you're not going to get arrested no one's gonna no one's gonna mess with you you know there's a lot of privacy in that respect as well people don't get in your business yeah but it, it obviously has a big downside and that is that people just do what they want and they make noise at all time of the night and you know do all sorts of bullshit so it can be annoying 
Yeah, but uh, definitely if you, especially when I came also from a westernized country when you come here, that is a huge attraction because you're like, hell yeah, all this personal freedom, you can basically live the way you want. And a, a lot of people go off the rails though, they take it too far. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stefan, actually I want to ask you this, in Australia you have tons of Chinese immigrants, right? A lot of Chinese immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. immigrants. Do they change their behavior to adapt to the kind of things that you're the stifling environment that you're talking about back home, or do they bring their own attributes there with they, them? They, they bring their own attributes. Okay. And um, and it's 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 a bit of a complaint from from a lot of Australians. It's like, oh, these people they come here and they you, you know that that racist stuff. Right. And um, but I don't know. I like I like the well. What happens in Sydney? There's pockets of populations that. Uh, are concentrated with with Asian immigrants, yeah. And I really like those areas. I like the I don't know. I like the feel of it. It's very very open. Very you're welcome here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's not about racism. It's about different cultures. And you know, the thing is, they uh, here in China. See, I'm going to say they because that's just the way it is. That's how it is. Um, Chinese. <laughs> you know, the the Chinese people will always treat us as outsiders, and they'll always be like, "Oh, look what this foreigner is doing, and this foreigner does this and that." And like, "Oh, look at foreigners how they behave and stuff." So, it's it's just a very straightforward thing. So, I've got a question for you. Uh -oh. do, do Chinese people drive badly in Australia? Oh man, put me on the spot. Yes, they do. There they uh, they very rarely indicate. They drive really slowly. And they just don't pay attention. Yeah, and that's how they drive here. We've so done a few videos on this topic, and actually, every time we post on, I'm I'm really paranoid about the local Chinese perception or like opinion of what we've just said, and everyone agrees with us. So like, yeah, we drive like shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you live in this place, like you're seeing firsthand today, driving or well, riding with us through the countryside and whatnot, you've seen for yourself how they drive here, right? Yeah. It's just the way it's done. So I guess if you grow up driving like this, when you go to another country, you just take your bad habits with you. I, I do the same thing. I've learned so many bad habits here, and it's getting me in trouble every time I go visit America. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I drive like a Chinese now. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Yeah, anyway. Winston drives like a Chinese guy as well. Like, yeah. I, 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 yeah, drove, I, I drove with him in this morning. It was uh, exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I do. You, you have to, if you, if you don't adapt here... Dude, you'll die. <laughs> yeah. And you'll never get anywhere because yeah. people do not allow you to, to like merge or whatever. They'll be like, screw you, this that is my That kind of spot. cutthroat attitude is what attracts a lot of people and what makes a lot of people go home very soon. Yeah. There's a car, guys. Yeah. And a bike. I feel ya. Yeah. Okay, cool. So anyway, um, we're taking Stefan, as you can see, on a nice little bit of a bike trip today. He's on the the scooter, you know, the the <laughs> night now rider the, scooter. Now the subscribers can't complain about you riding a scooter. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I, I like to ride that scooter, so whether people complain or not, like, I do prefer riding the bike, but every, every once in a while, you got to be a scooter bro, you know? Absolutely, totally agree. I've got a um, I got a big uh, 800 at home, and yeah. it's uh, it's nice getting on a nimble bike like this. Yeah, it's small and light. You can flick it around, and it's uh, it just doesn't have any power. But yeah, <laughs> no, I guess that's it. Hey guys, anything you want to add? Uh, thanks as always for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And a big thanks to Stefan out here for joining us here on Churchill Customs ADV China. Yes, and if you don't like, comment, or subscribe, as usual, guys. Until the next time, stay awesome. When I take your breath, you fill up my lungs yeah. And if my mind's work backwards for a minute